Hey guys, one of my commenters in a recent video asked me for some advice about nine ball break. And I'll give you guys a couple seconds to stop laughing. Okay, now you're just being mean, that's long enough. Specifically, he asked me about, I guess he's having problems making a ball in his nine ball pulley. He didn't specify what type of table he's playing on. Is it in a bar? Is it a pool room? Is it, you know, nice balls, nice equipment? Is it more or less crappy bar stuff? Didn't say. So I've got kind of got to talk about two different things, two different eras that I've had to go through, you know, playing pool. Well, I don't play nine ball very much, and I've never been that good of a, of a breaker as far as consistency and all that uh i was pretty good back in my youth at breaking hard but that's all that was important back then it's kind of funny i always said you know when i was younger i was never going to be one of those old guys that talks about oh how good they used to be i was going to still be good i was never going to be one of those guys and now i'm like king of those guys i don't really know what happened there of course, back then, I also planned on retiring by age 40. So me and whatever supermodel I was currently dating could travel the world and all that. That didn't happen either. Darn it. And so back to nine ball. So this is, I guess, probably by just about anybody standards, good equipment that I have here. The Arima Super, Pro, Super Pros, the Diamond, table everything's good uh the, the delta 13 rack racks everything nice um, and consistently every ball is touching that's i think the most important thing that you're going to get is every ball is touching these balls are of good enough quality they're all spherical they're all the same size they're all touching and that's what's important and nowadays a lot of places have equipment like that where you can get a good rack either through a template or maybe something like that delta 13 maybe sometimes even the rack that came with the table you can get a good solid rack it, it's important to get a good solid rack well, all the time with a nine ball they kind of do a couple different things depending on where things are spotted in this case I spotted the one on the foot spot and then everything else back behind that this is like the normal way to rack nine ball the the whiny crybaby way that has come along more recently is to move all this up so the nine is on the foot spot and they do this to try to prevent one of these wing balls from being made very consistently because you have consistent equipment, you have a consistent stroke. Once you get it dialed in, it is pretty hard to miss that wing ball. Now, I usually make it down here. But when I tried this with the camera going here a little while ago, it didn't go in. But we're just going to shoot it again. So, it's going to vary. Sometimes you might break from here so as you might break from here somewhere from here once you find the spot that works on your table and your rack and all that your stroke you can be pretty consistent with it and if you know my, my commenter league guy try to be consistent and try to pay attention to what's happening but so we're going to watch where the five goes if it doesn't go in i'll kind of show you how i've always kind of adjusted i've got the cue ball Right here, I've got a little dot. It's one diamond over, two diamonds up. I'm going to hit the one, try to hit the one dead in the face. And it's, I'm hitting it hard, but I'm not hitting it like at my top speed. I'm still hitting it pretty hard. I'm just trying to hit that one dead in the face and I'm watching where that five goes. Okay, so in that case, the five went in. After I said probably would. Um, if the five had come up here, then usually 
I'll move the cue ball closer to the rail. If the pipe had went long, usually I would move the cue ball closer closer to the center. Again, I am not the expert nine ball breaker by any stretch of the imagination. I just what I've always done when trying to make that wing ball. Watch where it goes. Make an adjustment. My rack and everything is all cons very consistent. And as I said, that's very important. So I can move the cue ball just a little bit and see what change I made. Maybe move the cue ball in the opposite direction now because I made the wrong adjustment. Figure it out. If you have a chance, if it's a practice, if you play league in a pool room or whatever, try to get some practice time on that table. To see what kind of you know equipment you're dealing with. With the nine, with the one on the foot spot like that, when you're racking, usually people are trying to make a wing ball. If you put the cue ball over there, you're trying to make this wing ball. If you put the cue ball over here, you're trying to make this wing ball. Usually that's what's happening. Other than that, just hit them hard and hope. If you don't make the wing ball, maybe you'll make something else. And that's why you hit them hard. If you're of the whiny crybaby generation, and now the nine is on the foot spot. And I don't think they do this in the league. They might. But in this case, the wing ball is harder, it's harder to make. The carom line would take the seven about right here. Now, the current line before was only going to take it to about here. But there's something that happens if all the balls are frozen. It's almost like the whole rack moves down and then explodes, something like that. Probably not really what happens. And I've never seen like a slow motion on this. I've got a gap. I just know I have a gap between the one and the six. You never want any gaps. I might have to tap these balls. Now, yeah, this is just a demonstration. Okay, that looks good. In this case, the reason they moved the nine up to the spot is they're trying to prevent somebody from just making the wing ball all the time. The pros, being pros, they pretty quickly figured out that now making the one is a lot easier. Making the one in the side. Put the cube all over here and make the one in this side. They do this kind of thing all the time. And usually they're doing what I've heard called a cut break. So they're going to basically hit about half the one with bottom English. Just try to get the cue ball to come over here and back across. Maybe back across and get some more balls moving or something. And then meanwhile, there goes the one up towards the side pocket. Um, I hardly ever, well, I don't know if I ever play with nine on the spot, but I do watch pull. So that, so that one went high of the pocket. I would make an adjustment. Probably I would have moved the cue ball this way and try to break again. See what happens. If you never play with the nine on the foot spot, you're probably better off just working on getting uh, a good solid rack and hitting the one ball solid and making your adjustments. Now that's if you're playing on good equipment. If you're playing on crappy equipment, either crappy rack, crappy balls, uh, crappy table or all three then i think you kind of need a different strategy i have some crappy balls out here these are like really classy you know i don't know balls from the 60s or 70s or something and i actually haven't tried this i'm going to assume that even with a fantastic ride, it's gonna be really hard to get everything solid. 
get it to be consistent with, with something like this. This thing's almost yellow. No, it is yellow. It is the one ball. Okay, so we're just going to do this. I'm going to see if I can get it to where it looks like all the balls are touching. Well, do you see people doing things like this? Trying to, uh, you know, when they're racking. And it's usually not because they have some secret sequence of their pattern racking or anything like that. I guess sometimes it is. But a lot of times it might just be they're finding some gaps and so they're just moving the ball and seeing if they can either eliminate the gap or put it at the back. If you can't get them all frozen, and I can't, what I usually do is if I'm going to break say from the angle the cue ball's at right now, I want these three balls at least to be frozen. The one, the three, and the six. If I was going to break from that side, the one, the five, and the seven. At least those three. If you can even do that. Sometimes you can't even do that. The thing is, about a setup like this, though, is it's going to be almost impossible to ever get a consistent rack from from one rack to the next almost impossible and at this point you kind of get back to where you know the way pool was when i first started playing the secret secret of a good nine ball break back then was not about getting your adjustments right and putting the wind ball in every, in every time it wasn't about doing your adjustments and getting the right stroke put the one in the side it wasn't about that. It was about hit it hard and solid. Because that was all you could do. Because you're not going to be consistent down here. So you try to be consistent in your stroke. And how you hit the ball and all that. And for the longest time, that's that's all we did. Even the top pros. Just hit it hard and hope. Because you, you can't consistently make any ball out of the rack. Because you're not going to get a consistent ride. If that's the situation that you're dealing with, you know, in your league, you can't get a consistent rack, crappy equipment or whatever. That's my advice to you: is just work on controlling the cue ball, hitting them hard, and hoping. Get because that's all you can do. It's all you can do. So. I didn't hit the one ball very solidly at all. Yeah, the cue ball jumped over here, or jumped over in this direction. If I set it up the exact same way again, what I thought was the exact same way, I might hit it, the cue ball might jump straight back and squat. It might go scratching the side. Because with a, with a setup of balls like this, you're gonna get all these little gaps, and they're gonna run, and it's really gonna change the way the balls react. So if you're, if you're forced to deal with inconsistent racks, then I think that's what, all you can really work on is try to hit it. hit it consistently. Don't get hooked behind the five. This is my brake stick in the way, it doesn't matter. Um, now, I, I just bought a brake rack recently to practice hitting the ball solidly and, and, and hard and all that. You can just rack the balls. You know, you ever watch like you know, Shane warming up for a tournament or practicing between matches? A lot of times he just racks balls and breaks them, racks balls and breaks them, racks balls and breaks them. Not all of us have his work ethic or the time that he apparently has to do things like that. Or well, the motivation. So, I, yeah, I guess that's just what you do. You can also get an app on your phone. I think, I think it's an app made by Predator. I think, yeah, Predator Break Speed, and it uses sound. So you have to count, you have to tell it what size table you have and where you're putting the cue ball. You set it down, you tell it you're getting ready to break, and it can tell the difference between the sound of your tip hitting the cue ball and the cue ball hitting the rod. It'll tell you how how fast your break was. I don't know if it's accurate. If it says you have a 21 mile per hour break, is it really exactly 21? 
But I have a feeling if you broke a little bit slower the next time, this would reflect. It was a little bit slower or a little bit harder if you hit broke it hard. It may not be, the numbers may not be exact, but I bet the relative speeds are, are, are correct. So, I guess, yeah, depending on what kind of equipment you're working on, if you can get good consistent racks, play with experimenting on, on your league table if you can. Where's the best place to go to put that wing ball in? Assuming you're racking with the one on the spot. That's going to give you your, your best chance of putting a ball in. Other than that, you want to hit it hard enough so if that wing ball doesn't go in, the other balls scatter around. You know, it's 28 inches of worth of pocket on this table. It just happens they're not all crammed together. They're, they're spread out. But you can put a ball in one of them. But your most consistent chance is going to be to put one of those wing balls in. If you're playing some situation where you're racking with the nine on the on the spot instead of the one on the spot, sorry for your luck, but you still have a, you still have a good chance to put the one in the sock. You know, those top guys do it way more often than they don't. They put the one in the sock. And sometimes, I don't know where my one went, sometimes, even if the one doesn't go in on the side, sometimes it can go up there and either go in or hang next to that pocket and then hopefully something else went in and you got a decent shot at the one. So, I wish I had better advice. Uh, there's just, there's not a lot to it. Uh, so much of the nine ball break is, in my opinion, luck. But there are some, some shots that can be made to be more likely than others if you have good, consistent equipment. And if you yourself are, are a consistent shooter, you don't want to be varying your speed unless you're doing it on purpose. You want to break the same speed every time. And then you can make your cue ball adjustments and see what happens when you do that. And in most cases, you're going to be looking to see what happens with those wing balls if you, if you can get a consistent rack. If you can't get a consistent rack, I think your only options are to, well, change bars and play out of a different league with better equipment. Another option would be just work on hitting that one ball solid and hard. Get that cue ball like you see a lot of guys do. Get that cue ball to bounce off the rock, sit there and squat. So you have your best chance of, of hitting the lowest number of ball on the table and you hit them hard to give yourself the, your best chance of putting a ball in basically by luck with that with that rack. That's my advice. I don't know if it's any good. It's what I have. And, uh, you know, Good luck and, and thanks.